Alright and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to take a look at the geolocation API inside of PhoneGap. Now the geolocation API allows us to gain access to the device's current position and it also allows us to watch the device's current position. Then we can take the longitude and latitude values and we could possibly use the Google Maps API to display that to the end user which is really cool. Now the geolocation.getCurrentPosition method returns the device's current position as a position object. Now we have three parameters for this method. We have the geolocation success parameter. This is basically calling back a function if we are successfully able to get the current position of the device. The geolocation error parameter is an optional parameter and it calls back a function if there is an error. And the geolocation options parameter is again an optional parameter and it allows us to set some geolocation options. Now this method is supported on the Android, iPhone, Windows Phone 7 Mango and the Blackberry OS 4.6 and the Blackberry WebWorks OS 5.0 and higher platforms. This has got pretty good support right here. So what we're going to do now is we are going to open up Dreamweaver and basically in this function that is being fired when PhoneGap is ready we want to say navigator so we're using the navigator object and then we want to use the geo location dot get current position method and what we want to do now is we want to put in our first parameter that is required which is the geolocation success parameter very important that you do that first so what we're going to do is we are going to call back the on success function if we are able to successfully get the current location of the device. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say function on success. So this is the function that will be called back when we are able to successfully get the current position of the device. And we want to pass in a parameter. So we'll come back to these other optional parameters of the geolocation.getCurrentPosition method later on. But right now I want to talk about the position object. So we pass in this position object as a parameter into our onSuccess function that we have. Now this position object contains the position coordinates that are created by the geolocation API. And we have a few properties here. We have the chords property. This is a set of geographic coordinates. The timestamp property is basically the creation timestamp for the coordinates in milliseconds. And again, there is the supported platforms. Now we do have a quirk with the timestamp property. Basically on the iPhone platform it uses seconds instead of milliseconds, which uh, that can be an easy fix. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Dreamweaver and I'm going to pass in this object as a parameter into this function. Like so. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an alert dialog box and we'll just say time stamp like so and then I'm going to say plus and I want to create a new date object in JavaScript and I want to open up the brackets and say position okay so think of it like we've had a parcel delivered to us okay now we want to grab that parcel and now we want to rip it open and see what's inside of there so I'm gonna say dot and then I'm gonna use the timestamp property alright nice and easy and close all your brackets and end with a semicolon so now what we can do is save that export it and install it on the device 
which I've gone ahead and done. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And there you go, we're getting a alert dialer box. Okay, and it's telling us uh, when the coordinates were captured, okay, and populated and stored inside of the position object. And then uh, we can just uh, carry on from there. Now, with the iPhone, as you saw, there was a little bit of an issue where the timestamp property on the iPhone platform uses seconds instead of milliseconds. So the way you get around that is you would say times 1000, okay? So that's that little asterisk and then 1000, okay? And that will solve your problem on the iPhone. So that's really easy and really, really simple. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the chords property inside of the position object and what this allows us to do is look inside of the coordinates object now the coordinates object is attached to the position object and basically it's a set of properties that describe the geographic coordinates of a position so we can get the latitude and longitude which those two are probably the most important and we can take those two values by the way and display them on the Google Maps API which is really really cool then we have the altitude property that gets the height of the position in meters above the ellipsoid. Then we have the accuracy property. This gets the accuracy level of the latitude and longitude coordinates in meters. Then we have altitude accuracy, heading, and speed. Okay, so we have all those properties. Okay. And so, what we first have to do is look inside of this coordinates object that's attached to the position object. And the way we do that is we use the chords property inside of the position object. And that will allow us to look inside of the coordinates object. And then we can start to use all these properties. And again, there is the support of platforms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down a little bit and what we'll do is we will first show the latitude So we say position, okay? Then we want to look inside of that coordinates object that's attached to the position object. So we say chords, dot, and then we can put in the property latitude. All right, nice and easy and nice and simple. Okay, so I'm going to copy that now. And let's go ahead and get the longitude. And so we're going to use the longitude property and then we can use all the other properties and to save time what I'm going to do is paste those guys in right there okay so that we can get on with the actual uh, tutorial that we have okay so I'm getting the latitude longitude altitude accuracy altitude accuracy heading speed and then I'm also getting the timestamp 
So what I can do now is I can save this and we can export this and install it on the device. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. All right, so I'm going to open this up. And as you can see, we have the latitude, the longitude, the altitude it didn't manage to get, the accuracy it did, the altitude accuracy didn't get, heading didn't get, speed didn't get, because I imagine that we're not actually traveling right here, and uh, the timestamp, okay, is right there. Now, try not to worry about, you know, all these properties that it missed, because really, you just want you know the latitude and the longitude basically for you know the Google Maps API and stuff like that which is really really incredible and really really fast and effective so those two values that we have right there they are the most important okay try not to worry about all the other stuff because you probably won't end up using them anyway but for demonstration purposes I've showed you how to and it's important for you to know that some devices already provide an implementation for this spec. For those devices, the built-in support is used instead of replacing it with the phone gaps implementation. Okay, so you have to bear that in mind as well. Okay. But however, that is pretty cool. Okay, we are getting the position overall okay even though we haven't got the altitude and stuff like that but we are getting you know the position and that's really really great and as I said just with those two values we can now use the Google Maps API and show them exactly where they are on an actual map which is very very cool and instead of displaying you know a load of numbers which they don't understand so that's really cool and really fantastic Okay. Now, there is a quirk with the altitude accuracy property on the Android platform. Basically, this property is not supported by Android devices and it will always return null. Okay. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the position error object. So, in order to do that, I need to now define the geolocation error parameter. So, let's call back the onError function if there is an error and we can't get the location of the device. So I'm going to say function on error. And again, we need to pass in the position error object as a parameter into this function. So I say error okay, and I can create an alert dialog box and we can say the code so what is the error code itself? So again, I say plus error dot code. Okay, and then I'm gonna say plus backslash n. Okay, and then we can also get the message as well. So I say plus error dot message. Okay. Like so. Nice and easy. So the code property is one of the predefined error codes listed below. Okay, so there's your error codes. So if we have a timeout, it means that uh, we can actually set a timeout in our options. But again, we'll get onto that later on. Uh, but we can basically set the time in which we want to get a response. And if it takes longer than that, then it will time out. So that's when we'll get the timeout uh, error code. 
And then, you know, if it's unavailable for some reason, if geolocation is switched off on the device, if geolocation is not supported on the device and so forth, then uh, the position error, okay, if the permissions are denied, you need to make sure that you have permission to do this, okay. So, if there was a permissions error, then you'll get that error code. Now the message is the error message describing the details of the error encounter. So that will, you know, take care of the message for us that we can display to the end user, which is pretty cool. And uh, that's all that really uh, there is to it. Okay, so that's nice and simple. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the geolocation dot watch position method. So this method will allow us to keep track of the position of the device instead of just capturing the information and displaying it once. We can keep track of all of the changes in the position of the device and then we can update the display to the user which is fantastic. And again we have three of our basic parameters. We have the geolocation success parameter. Again this is a required parameter. And it calls back a function with the position object being passed in as a parameter to that callback function. Then we have the geolocation error parameter. Again, that's optional. And then we have the geolocation options parameter, which we're going to take a look at in this segment of the tutorial. And basically, that's allowing us to define some geolocation options. And the supported platforms are Android, iPhone, Windows Phone 7 Mango, and the BlackBerry OS 4.6, and the BlackBerry WebWorks OS 5.0 and higher platforms. Now what this will do is return a string, which is the watch ID that references the watch position interval. The watch ID can be used with geolocation.clearwatch to start watching for changes in the position of the device. So that's really great. So let's go ahead and take a look at some optional parameters now. First of all we have the frequency parameter. This is basically setting how often to retrieve the position in milliseconds. Now just to note something about the frequency parameter, it's not part of the W3C specification and it will be removed in the future. So you should use the maximum age parameter instead. Now if you don't define the frequency parameter, then it will default to 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. Then we have the enable high accuracy parameter. This provides a hint that the application would like to receive the best possible results. Now you either need to set that as true or false. True meaning yes I want to enable high accuracy and false I don't want to enable high accuracy. Then we have the timeout optional parameter. This basically is the maximum length of time in milliseconds that is allowed to pass from the call to geolocation.getCurrentPosition or the geolocation.watch position until the corresponding geolocation success callback is invoked. Then we have the maximum age optional parameter. This accepts a cached position whose age is no greater than the specified time in milliseconds. So, as I said before, use the maximum age parameter instead of the frequency parameter. Okay, so let's go over to Dreamweaver and I'm just going to delete this code out right here because we don't need that. I'm going to leave the on success function alone there and the on error function alone. Uh, but right now I'm just going to delete that out and I'm going to create a variable. Okay, and we'll give this variable a name of watcher and I'm going to say equals null. So basically it has no value. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say watcher which is my variable name then I'm going to say equals so I'm assigning something to my variable and I'm going to point to the navigator object say dot geolocation and then we're going to use 
the watch position. Okay, so as you can see, the first thing that we need to define is our geolocation success parameter, which is calling back our function, okay, which will have the position object passed in as the parameter. So I'm going to say on success. Then the next parameter we define is the geolocation error callback. So I'm just going to say on error. Again, that's optional. And then we can define some optional parameters. I'm going to put in a comma. And we can either put the optional parameters in right there inside of uh, parentheses like that. So we can put in here, you know, frequency like so. Okay. Or what we could do is we could take that. So we can cut that out. Store it in a variable. variable a name, paste on there, end with a semicolon, and then we can copy the variable name, paste it in there, okay? It's just a cleaner way of doing things, uh, but again, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so frequency again is how often you want to retrieve the position in milliseconds, okay, so don't forget. 3,000 milliseconds is 3 seconds. Now, if you don't define the frequency optional parameter, it will default to 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want to change that, okay, to maximum age with a capital A, very important because it is case sensitive, maximum age. Okay, because as you know, uh, the frequency parameter is soon going to be taken out of the spec, so we don't want that. Okay, so now we have this, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go inside of our on success function that's called back when we have successfully managed to capture the geolocation data from the device and we're passing in the position object as a parameter into this function. And so now I'm going to go over to the DOM and I'm going to create a new DOM element. Finding location, let's give this an ID so that we can point to it in JavaScript. Okay, I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to create a variable, give the variable a name, I'll just call this element. And basically, this variable is going to point to that element. And then I'm just going to say element.inner HTML equals. And let's display the latitude. Okay, like so. So I'm going to say plus position dot chords dot latitude. All right, let's say plus, and we'll just create a quick line break in there so it makes it more legible for the viewers. And this one will be longitude. All right, nice and easy. And then we can take that off and place it with a semicolon. Okay. So that is fairly simple, okay? And so now what we can do is we can save this and we can export it to the device. 
which I have gone ahead and done so let's open this guy up okay and there you go it's found the latitude and longitude okay and the issue is that even if I move it after three seconds it still stays the same so you're probably going well that's a bit of an issue because that's the only reason why we would use the watch ID instead of uh, get the current position method so how do we get around this well I'm just first going to show you how to clear okay the watch position interval okay so we are you know just going to create a button to stop it watching even though we're not watching at the moment but okay don't worry about it too much all right because I've found a solution in a way that will basically allow us to get around it. It's sort of a cheat, but it works nonetheless. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at the geolocation.clearwatch method. Now this method requires one parameter, which is the watch ID parameter. And basically this is the ID of the watch position interval to clear and again it's a string so that string is returned from the watch position method and basically all we have to do is put that string in and it will clear the watch position interval and the supported platforms are Android, iPhone, Blackberry OS 4.6 and the Blackberry Webworks OS 5.0 and higher platforms so what we're going to do real quick is just set up an anchor tag. All right, it's just going to be a dummy anchor tag, meaning it doesn't go anywhere. But we are going to trigger a function when we click on this anchor tag. And we'll just say stopwatch. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that function. Okay, and then I'm going to create an if statement. Okay, and now I need to put in my condition in the brackets. So, basically, I want to see if this watcher variable is not equal to null. And that will tell me that it's basically watching the current position of the device at a regular interval. So if it's not equal to null, then it's creating the watch position interval. And then I can step in and say, stop the interval and uh, set this variable's value back to null again. So I'm just going to say watcher which is the variable name, is not equal to, so the way I do that is I put an exclamation mark and equals, is not equal to null, then I want to run whatever is in between those two opening and closing parentheses. And what I want to do is say navigator dot geolocation dot, and then we want to say clear watch and then we need to put in the watch ID parameter, which is watcher in my case. Again, it depends on what you name your variable. And then we simply put it in like that. Really nice and simple and very, very easy. So now we've taken out the interval. What we need to do is set this variable back to null. Just like that really easy and very very simple okay now obviously I would demonstrate this to you but at the moment um, we're not getting those repeat results that we want so right now let's work on the workaround okay so that we can get refreshing the data and we are starting to actually follow the devices position instead of just getting the device's position and then that's it so we want to follow this device so I'm just going to delete that out there because we don't want it and what we're going to do is change this to 
geolocation dot get current position and what we'll do is we'll change that optional parameter to enable high with a capital H accuracy with a capital A and that is a boolean optional parameter which means it wants the true or false so we're going to say true and all that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up in an interval so we're going to say window dot set interval and we have the code which is obviously this guy right here then we need to put in the delay so I'm going to say comma and the delay will be every 2000 milliseconds and that's basically it okay that's the little cheat that we have <laughs> okay so now what I can do is I can save that and as you can see down here I put plus equals so instead of it's stripping out all of the chart elements of that element we are just saying plus equals so we're adding to it every time so that's pretty cool so that's in the inner HTML method just say plus equals and then you can add and add and add and let's uh, smarten this out a little bit let's create a line break right there uh, because we will need it and a line break at the end I forgot to put that in quotes. Okay. Now, right here, okay, is basically where we're just looping this code around and around every 2000 milliseconds. Okay. Now, I don't recommend in doing this, uh, the only reason why I'm doing this is because. You know, I'm showing you a way round if the position watcher method uh, doesn't work. Okay, in my case, it doesn't work. It shows the first one, and then it doesn't show anything after that. Now, whether that's something to do with my platform or whatnot, I don't know. But this way, it just helps you get around that. Okay, if you ever face that problem. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this and install it on my device. So I've gone ahead and done that, so let's open this up. As you can see, gets the current position, then let's move this. Okay. Like so, if it refresh, we'll be able to see there are uh, some slight, slight changes, like down here we have 45 instead of 75. And you can, well, you can see right there, you know, we've got big changes, all right, even though it's kind of hard to see because there's lots and lots of numbers about. Again, uh, you can see that it's updating it, all right. So that's a way to get around it, okay. And it's there, it's, it's an option, but obviously, I don't recommend this way over using the watch position method, okay? Because the watch position method is faster than this, okay? And it's more accurate from what people have said on the internet and so forth. So, try the watch position method first, and if that doesn't work, then you can setting an interval, and then we are just using the get current position method to get the current position of the device and then we're just looping that round and around and around and around and around and that's basically it that's all that happens okay so as I said a little cheat but it gets you there and at least you can provide you know a, a tracking system so you could have the Google Maps API and you could be following them on the you know the Google Maps and they can see where they are and so forth. Now, please do remember that again, uh, this method is not exactly the most accurate in the world. <laughs> okay, um, so they could be, you know, a couple of meters out, stuff like that. And again, the way to find that out would be to use the 
accuracy property. So what I could do right here, oops, a plus on the end of there. Let's get that. Uh, we can say accuracy. And this will tell us in meters how accurate we are. Okay, so we can save that, export it, and install it on the device. Which again, I've gone ahead and done. So let's open this up. And I'll just refresh this. Okay, finding location. It's found the location. Okay, and it's 48 meters. So it can be a fair way away. Okay. Uh, so as I said, you're better off using uh, the other method if you can. If not, then you can just use my little workaround, <laughs> and uh, you can see how it goes from there. But yeah, that's basically it. Alright, so that is pretty cool. And so that is the geolocation API inside of PhoneGap. So I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial.